Now, let's spend some time in terms of understanding the estimation of parameters of a particular statistical distribution. We know there are two major methods, though we can uh, bring in many more. One such method of estimation of the parameters is the method of movement, whereas the other one, we have it as the maximum likelihood approach. Right? Though we can talk about uh, the method of percentiles, method of quantiles, a few other approaches also to estimate the parameter values. Now, whenever we talk about the method of moments, the moments are nothing but your mean, variance, skewness, kurtosis. So, by determining these kind of values for my data, I should be able to estimate the parameters. So, we know for each of the distribution, there are a set of parameters. Let's say a Poisson distribution, the parameter is lambda. For a binomial distribution, the parameters are n and p. For a normal distribution, the parameters are mu and sigma squared. So, estimating these values from the data by computing their corresponding mean, variance, skewness, kurtosis is what we call as the method of moments. Now, here we look at two scenarios, one being a one-parameter case, the second one is a two-parameter or a multiple-parameter case. So, whenever we are doing this kind of a work, we are equating, if I am having one parameter kind of a situation, I am equating the population mean to the sample mean and then solving for the parameter. So, I will equate, I will try, so for example, you take an example like this, a random sample is taken from an exponential distribution with lambda as the parameter and it follows that, so is, these are the numbers. Okay, let me take the numbers here, 14.84, one observation was 14.84, there was one observation for 0.19, then we have 11.75 as the third observation, 1.18 as the next, 2.44 as the next and 0.53 as the next observation. Now we are saying that this follows an exponential distribution. I don't know what is the parameter lambda. So, we are saying calculate the method of moments estimate for lambda. The easiest way is, now we know if it is an exponential distribution, what is the mean of the exponential distribution? 1 by lambda. So, the mean of the exponential distribution is 1 by lambda. And what I do is I will compute the mean of this data set, which is the average of this data set. Okay. So, the average of this data set is 5.155. So, if it is following an exponential distribution, then its mean should be 1 by lambda, which means I will equate it. This should be equal to 5.155. And from here, I get my lambda, which is the parameter of this particular distribution. So, I will say the lambda which is uh, the parameter of this distribution is 1 by this much wherein I will take it as 0.193. That is the parameter I will use for this. So, this is a simple method of moments mechanism of estimating a parameter. And in some cases what will happen is, look at like this, for some population, the mean does not involve the parameter. Here the mean is 1 by lambda. There is a parameter here. But look at a distribution like this, uniform from minus A to A. For a uniform distribution, what is the mean? A plus B by 2. If it is a uniform within A and B, we say the mean is A plus B by 2. Then if it is like minus A plus A by 2, which is 0, it does not contain the parameter inside it. Now, when the parameter is not there, probably instead of going with the mean, I will try out the next higher moment, let's say the variance or expected value of x squared or expected value of x cube or skewness. 
some such kind of higher order moment is what will be tried out in case the mean does not contain the parameter which I am estimating. So every estimator for me is a random variable only. Right now estimator whatever I have got even this is not a constant probably if my sample changes even this could change a little bit here and there. So every estimator is also having a kind of a sampling distribution. So this is what we have to see. How good is this estimator? Right? Uh, what is the kind of uh, proximity to the true value is this uh, estimator primarily bringing up? And the actual, so the words wise also, whenever we are using the word estimator, it is more to do with a random variable which means the estimator we denote with a capital letters and that estimator will have a sampling distribution as well. But whenever I am using the word estimate, it is purely the actual sample. So this is actually the estimate. The estimator when I am saying it is a random variable which will have a kind of a distribution. So the words we have to use quite comfortably there. Then if at all the situation goes to two parameters, what it says is Instead of just the first order moment equating the mean, now you start equating the second order moment, whether it is the expected value of x squared or probably the variance, which is a central moment, which is expected value of x minus x bar squared. Whatever it is, the first order moment, which is the mean, and the second order moment, either central moment or uh, moment over zero. Any of them, moment about the origin or moment, uh, central moment, anything can be used. So I can very well find out the variance and uh, equate it or I can very well know the expected value of x squared and equate it. But what happens is in many a cases, the variance is known much in advance, right? I mean, if I am talking about a binomial distribution, I know that the mean of a binomial distribution is NP, but the variance of it is NP into 1 minus P. Similarly, uh, for a Poisson distribution, I know that the mean is lambda, variance is also lambda. For an exponential distribution, I know that the mean is 1 by lambda, the variance is 1 by lambda squared. So, the mean and the variance of a good number of distributions are known right, right at the outset. Or probably if I am uh, looking at uh, a, a gamma distribution with uh, alpha and lambda as the parameters, I know that the mean is alpha by lambda, the variance is alpha by lambda squared. So for different kinds of distributions, we have a good amount of understanding regarding the mean and the variance. So that is the reason we can very well uh, compute the mean and the variance from the data, equate and then solve the resulting pair of equations. So either I can use the mean moment from the origin or the central moment like the variance. Just look at this example. A random sample from a binomial NP distribution. Right. Uh, so it is yielding the following values. Let's see here. 4, 2, 7, 4, 1, 4, 5, 4. 7, 4, 1, 4, 5, 4. So let's say these are the values that are uh, coming from a binomial distribution with n and p. Now I have to find the method of moments estimate for both. So I'll say I'll find out the mean, which is typically the average of all these. So mean is coming to be this much. Then at the same time, I will also look at the variance. I will find out the variance of this. I will find out the variance here comes out to be this much. So now I will say NP is equal to 3.875. NP into 1 minus P is equal to 2.859. So if I am dividing one by the other, right, one minus P comes out to be this divided by this. So from here I will get one minus P is equal to this number divided by this number which is coming out to be this. 
So the P works out to be as 1 minus of this. So the P is around 0.26. And from here I can get NP is equal to this much. So N I can very well get which is the mean divided me which is the mean divided by p so around 14.78 almost 15 is the typical n so i can very well uh, say that uh, this is a distribution where n equal to 15 and uh, p is uh, something around 0.26 Again, here when I am uh, doing it, not with the population, let's say with the sample, just trying out, right, wherein I am dividing it by n minus 1 rather than n. So, in case of sample, okay, this is my variance, from here comes 1 minus p. So, from here comes the p and the n is coming out close to 25 here, depending on, because it's a sample, I will have to go with the sample variance. So, 25 is the N and P is somewhere around 0.156. So, this is how we come out with the method of moment estimates based on a particular distribution. And if there are more than two parameters, I can rely on the third order moment, fourth order moment and so on. So, that's the typical uh, way out uh, solving the parameter uh, estimates of a distribution using the method of moments approach, right?